Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey and that is the refreshed 2025 Hyundai Santa Cruz, a segment busting vehicle for the brand that did receive a mild update for 2025. I'm at the New York International Auto Show where I will show you all the improvements Hyundai has made. Stay tuned. It is springtime here in East Texas, and you know what that means? The pollening is happening. Thanks to our friends at carcover.com, we were able to get a custom perfect fit car cover for my 2013 Chevy Cruze. They know it's important to keep your car protected, and what they sent me was their Gold Shield 5L car cover, which beats all its competitors for many reasons. It resists all types of extreme weather conditions, such as snow, and is 100% waterproof and water resistant. This is the ultimate car care cover for storing your vehicle and protecting it while outside. The soft fleece lining is sure to protect your vehicle's paint and finish while it is underneath. And this car cover was so simple to install, I was able to do it myself for the very first time in under 15 minutes. It comes with a couple clips for the front and the back and a lockable cable to secure it across the middle. So this car cover is not going anywhere and it will help me keep all that pollen out here in the springtime in East Texas. Huge thanks to carcover.com for providing us with this Gold Shield 5L cover for my Chevy Cruze. You can get one for yourself. Simply follow the link down in the description below and enter promo code GT Garage Talk in the coupon field at checkout for a discount off your first order. Yes, gearheads, I am in New York City for the New York International Auto Show where Hyundai has updated their truck let their mini truck, their Santa Cruz, much like the Tucson on which it shares a platform with. Unlike the Tucson, the story under the hood is slightly different. Where the Tucson gets full gas, full hybrid, and a full plug-in hybrid variants, we get a 2.5 liter four-cylinder in turbo and non-turbo form. This one obviously is the turbo. This is a limited trim but we've got uh, several different things to talk about on this one. I'll go ahead and put the power numbers on the screen for you here, but unfortunately no hybrid and no plug-in hybrid, even though the vehicle on which uh, this platform is based does get both of those things. What are your thoughts? Is that a deal breaker? Does that have you looking at the main rival to this in the Ford Maverick? As we close the hood of this one and pull out, it should become a little bit more obvious exactly what was changed for the 2025 model year, at least here on the outside. The exterior design has been given a more blo blocky, rugged look uh, versus the outgoing model, which was a little softer. So we've got chunkier running lights up here that still follow the same design motif. We still get those uh, divorced headlights from the running lights up front and just a generally more upright, boxy, square-ish front end, which is more and more of the trend. It's why the Maverick is so popular, it's boxy style, and it's why the new Hyundai Santa Fe is so popular. So yes, the Santa Cruz does get a little more or blocky design and style. As we come around to the side of this one, this being the limited trim with that 2.5 liter turbo, it's the more luxurious one. I'll show you something special here in just a moment, but we'll take a look at these wheels, these five star pattern wheels, five lug wheels wrapped in some Michelin Primacy. Uh, I do believe all season tires, can't tell uh, too well. Uh, they are 20 inch wheels and tires. They are 245.50 R20. But yes, Michelin Primacy LTX, so light truck uh, tires, I do believe, is the LTX designation. A very interesting five-star uh, pattern design on the wheels here. Very nice look. I do like all of the little Easter eggs on this one, including the silhouette of the vehicle right here. The rugged looking wheel cladding that uh, runs over both the front and the rear of this vehicle. The overall profile though has not changed much. This is a mid-cycle refresh. 
So we get updated exterior looks, both front and rear, and a new interior. Well, let's go ahead and talk about that new interior, because much like the uh, Tucson on which is based, which I did just show you that gray one in a separate video, if you want to go check that out, we get a much more upgraded, updated look here. So gone is that dual cockpit style uh, that we saw in the previous generation of both this and the Tucson. And we get a more squarish, boxy style here in uh, the Santa Cruz as well. Door panels really have not changed. They still carry that uh, design line here on the side, which is fine. It works. It's classy. Uh, I don't like all the gloss black here on high touch points. It is a slight knock for me, but we do have multi-way positional seats with two-way lumbar. Get, I do believe HTEX seating here, but heated and ventilated on this higher trim, which I really like. And we're going to go ahead and pop in. Ooh, somebody was sitting in a very awkward position in this one very recently, but you can see we get an updated Hyundai steering wheel with that Morse code H uh, on the steering wheel that they've been doing on more and more of their vehicles lately. All your typical driver controls here, but we do have this addition of a camera here facing me, taking a look at my eyeballs to make sure that I am paying attention to the road. Back behind that, we get updated uh, screens and IP in here. These are 12.3 inch screens versus the 10 and a quarter from the outgoing model. If you do remember the outgoing, uh, it was kind of inset into the dash. And then we had a kind of floating console right here. Uh, gone is that dual cockpit design. We have a more blocky uh, design with the curved 12.3 inch dual 12.3 inch screen here does look like we get some fingerprint recognition. Two-person memory seat here on this one. Wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is a nice touch. It does not look like we get the head-up display that is available in the Tucson, which is a little bit unfortunate as well. I guess Hyundai does not deem that as big of an issue for their active trucklet buyers but what is a big plus for me here in this one is actual tactile controls uh, for the volume you can or the uh, climate we have dual zone climate control here with a readout screen of the temperature here in the middle all your additional controls are on this touch pad here in the center and then we get physical volume and tuning knobs huge win over the outgoing model really like that a lot another huge win is we get some rubberized storage up here so that is a nice touch as well just a little bit more place to put stuff otherwise moving down this is a departure from what we see in the new Tucson this is more of a carryover look versus what the Tucson gets in a new updated center console so instead of like the Tucson having the steering column mounted gear selector we still get the center console mounted gear selector here which removes the Qi wireless charger that we saw in the Tucson, but we still get dual cup holders right here. Uh, the Qi wireless charger has been moved up here from what we see in the Tucson. So you still get it. I, I said removes, I should have just said moves, but yeah, Qi wireless charger right there. Two USB-C ports here. This is a dual function. It could be USB and power or strictly just power. Again, that's for interfacing with that new screen. We get a cigarette lighter style uh, power outlet there. A little bit of rubberized storage here. Four wheel drive lock, different drive modes, downhill descent control, physical button for your camera, electronic parking brake and parking brake hold. A similar center console from the outgoing model. Again, I believe everything down here has not changed over the uh, 24 models. I believe this is largely carryover, but the dash itself is what's been updated. And I really like this uh, update for the Santa Cruz. Also, the additional storage up here. Space up here for me, I'm 5'10", it's pretty good. You can see we get a standard style uh, sunroof here, no big panoramic roof with a uh, manual sliding shade up above. Let's take a look now in the back seat, Let's see what the back seat space is like. Yes, much like the uh, outgoing model, not a lot has changed back here. You can see the design of the back door is a little bit different from the Tucson. You've got this big swooping line uh, that translates to the exterior of the vehicle. We do get cup holders in the door, but again, it's surrounded in gloss black plastic. Not my favorite. Under seat storage, that's big in pickup trucks. It's actually a fairly decent amount here. Uh, 
vehicles like the new Toyota Tacoma do a great job on their non-hybrid models of giving you underfloor storage. But I think uh, when we're talking about these unibody crossover trucks, I think Honda Ridgeline is still the best for under seat storage back in the back. Hopping in behind myself, because this is a more of a truck based vehicle than an SUV, uh, space compared to what we saw in that uh, Tucson is a little bit limited. It is a little bit tighter back here, but for the segment, I'd say it's right on par. We do uh, get a couple air vents back here, two USB ports back here, and some storage pockets all the way across. We also get a full down center armrest with a couple cup holders, uh, lower latch points for child safety seats very nice materials back here decent headroom again i can't recline because there's a bulkhead behind me we'll talk about that in a second but without the big massive panoramic roof i do have a nice cutout right above my head here so i actually have more headroom than i saw in tucson as we pop out of the door, I am slightly curious of what the uh, child seat restraint system is like. Uh, we'll have to get one of these for a full week to really put Tucker's child seat in and see what that is like living with. You can see the fuel door here is just accessed by pushing, not a uh, capless fuel filler system, which is interesting. You can see here we have a designed in California. And as we come around to the back, generally a uh, uh, mild refresh uh, to the rear lighting scheme of the overall design back here. You can see much like the General Motors pickup trucks, we do get a corner step here, which I really like. You can see we also get designation that this is the turbo model with that H-Track all-wheel drive. Santa Cruz uh, stepped in the uh, tail or tailgate and then an electronic releasing rear uh, tailgate as well. You can see we get a composite bed back here in the back and we're going to go ahead open it wide up i like that automatically retracting hard tonneau cover it does give you some nice covered storage back here which is nice we also get an in-bed trunk not as big as a honda ridgeline but still a very nice option in a vehicle that isn't going to be doing some heavy off-roading uh, but just a nice storage option for that down there. Also like the Honda Ridgeline, we've got some storage there, some tie down cleats all the way around, some lighting back here, all the way around. Generally a very nice usable space for urbanites looking for maybe a place to put some dirty gear and such. Very light and easy to lift and close, which I really like. Unlike the Honda Ridgeline with its dual function tailgate, which was very heavy to close as a traditional tailgate, uh, this is a very easy in that regards. That's enough time here with this one. Let's go check out the other Santa Cruz they showed off in the new XRT trip. Yes, gearheads, we've moved to the stage now because this is the model they decided to show off to the masses at the press conference here at the New York Auto Show. This is the updated XRT trim, and there are some XRT specific things that I wanna talk about on this one. First of all, the color, really love this orange color. There's a lot of orange in this general area of the show. And if you go check our previous videos from the Genesis unveiling, you'll see exactly what I mean. But since we're looking at the XRT version of the Santa Cruz, we can talk about the XRT specific front and rear bumpers, the new uh, front grill that it, you can see is all dark versus the limited trim we just saw. Uh, wheels and tires we'll talk about here in just a little bit, but the thing that really ups the game for me, we've got orange tow hooks here on this one. So orange tow hooks and improved approach angle versus other models on this one. The very dark um, logo on the front. We've got XRT badges on the inside of the seats and stuff. But uh, a complaint of mine on the XRT version of, I'll just go ahead and show you right there, the Santa Fe that I recently drove in Tennessee. This adds surround view cameras. So yes, right underneath this dark H, we have a front facing camera. I do really um, hesitate to highly recommend cameras in off-road vehicles because people tend to use them as their 
spotter. I still think you deserve eyes on the outside of your vehicle, but I will say from our time in the XRT version of the Santa Fe, I could have really used just a little bit of extra visibility up in front of me and we get that surround view 360 camera here on the XRT, which I really like. As we're over here to the side, I'm gonna give Andre from TFL Truck uh, the uh, respect he deserves. Looks like he's filming, finished filming here. So we'll talk about these wrench inspired 18 inch wheels wrapped in uh, terrain contact all terrain tires this again is like what they did with santa fe so a more rugged off-road tire package uh, for their xrt trim which i really like you also get this side body cladding that we did not see on the limited checking out the interior we've got a few differences on the interior we still get h text but you can see xrt is embossed uh, here up front. Otherwise, very similar interior. No fingerprint reader on this one, but a very nice interior. Still get those uh, dual 12.3 inch screens. And then the XRT specific rear end of this, you can see the dark bumper, the XRT badge there on the left, and still some shiny work here on the Hyundai uh, logo on the handle back in the back, but you can see we have that backup camera back here. Really like the addition of cameras to XRT and hope to see this continue throughout the model line. I really, really think that it is a benefit, especially in something that's more of a softer than a full off-roader. You're less tempted to use it as a spotter and more as an extra set of eyes, making sure your wheels are pointed in the right place on the trail that you are most likely traveling down but there you have it gearheads uh two different trims of the new 2025 hyundai santa cruz launched unveiled here in new york city at the new york international auto show if you want to see us drive one of these which i hope is coming very soon be sure and hit that subscribe button down below ring the bell so you are notified when that video drops find us on all social media channels facebook instagram x TikTok, threads youtube all the things at gt garage shock or you can go to gt but as for me with the updated 2025 santa cruz until next time gearheads bye